Welcome to part 30 of building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue our series here. I uh, can't believe we're already 30 videos deep. So before we jump into things, drop a like down below. Say you're here in the comments if you actually made it this far. A lot of videos, plenty more to come, and let's continue. Particularly in this video, what I wanted to do is start working on the settings screen since it's a little bit of a change of pace and I kind of don't want to see empty tabs anymore. So let's get into it. So cool thing, let's go into our controller here for core and settings is one of the controllers in here, the RM settings view controller. And let's talk about what we want in here. So we're gonna have a similar setup where we abstract the view, the view model, but what do we wanna use for the view in here? So typically what's pretty common is to use either a collection view or a table view. Now we've used a table view um, for the vast, or rather a collection view for the vast majority of this series. And our locations are gonna be a table view. So what I will go ahead and do here is maybe we wanna use a Swift UI view to power this particular tab. And we're gonna use what's called a list, which is very similar to a table view. But because I did promise that we're gonna learn both Swift UI and UI kit, let's go ahead and do it with Swift UI. So for those of you not familiar, I'll preface with the way we've been building out all of our UI is with a framework called UIKit, which we've been importing. But there is a newer framework, which is fairly popular, but I would say not as popular with, you know, uh, industry, especially big tech, you know, the Googles, the Facebooks of the world. But I digress, still good to know. So let's learn about it. Regardless of what type of view framework we want, we are still going to want a view model uh, accordingly to configure all this jazz. So we're gonna open up our view model folder here and let's go ahead and organize some of this stuff. Well, I guess it is organized. So let me create a folder in here and this is going to be called settings. Gonna create a file in here, it'll be a Swift file and we're gonna call this rm settings view view model so the view model for the settings view i'm just going to copy the name there since we are going to create a object with the exact same name and if you think about it if we just want a list of entry let's say we want like rate app or um, context us, terms of service privacy policy maybe we'll also want to show actual settings in here perhaps we'll do like font size or something but whatever it might be we're going to want a view model for each of those cells so in here, what we want is we're going to say let cell view models. And this is going to be a RM settings uh, cell view model like that. And it's going to actually be a collection of those RM settings cell view view model. So let's actually drop the view here, just a settings cell view model. And we'll create this object as well. I'll do it in another file just to keep things nice and organized. And this one here is going to have a few things on it. So I'll make this one a class as well. And let's add an initializer here. I forgot to do that, I believe, in this one here, which is why it's yelling at me that we don't have that. And let's see, do we actually want this to be a class? I guess we can get away with making it a struct, which will actually auto-generate that uh, constructor for us. So we can also do that in here. Let me make this one a struct as well. And each of the cells that we have for our settings list is more or less going to have uh, two pieces of information. One, it's going to have an image, and then two, it's gonna have an actual title. And when we tap on a particular item in our list here that we'll create, we can either handle that directly in SwiftUI or we can use a delegate or a closure or some other mechanism to pass it back to UIKit. So we're not gonna worry about that for the time being, but let's actually do this. So we're gonna say we have a image here, which will be a UI image optional. Don't forget to open up, uh, rather import UI kit here. And here we're gonna have a title, which will be a string non-optional. Alrighty, so let's further think about how we wanna go about creating these view models, right? So we could create them imperatively and pass all of these pieces of information in one by one, but there is actually a much better way to do this. And that is by leveraging a list of options that our settings actually supports. And I'm gonna create a new file here. We're gonna call it RM settings, uh, RM settings option. And this is going to be an enum, which lists out all the cases for our settings. So let's just create a bunch in here. So maybe we'll have rate app, we'll have uh, contact us, I'm gonna have terms, privacy, not piracy, privacy, 
And let's see what else we want in here. Perhaps we're gonna also want to do, let's see, what else do we usually have in settings? I guess those four are probably good to start off with. Maybe I'll have a another one called API reference. And maybe I'll also do something along the lines of view series that'll go to this YouTube uh, playlist. And finally, view code. So these will be the uh, seven options in the order that we are going to want to actually have them appear. We'll make them case iterable so we can actually loop over all of the cases in here. And inside of this enum, we are actually going to compute the title and image. So let's go and import UI kits. We're gonna have uh, display title is what I'll call it here. It'll be a computed property. And then we'll have a uh, icon image here, which will be UI image optional. For now, I'll just return nil so it doesn't yell at me. And in here, we're gonna switch on self and it should give us all of the options hopefully for us. Here we'll say rate app. This will be contact us. This will be terms of service. And we're basically abstracting all of this stuff inside of here. This way we can derive a view model just from one of these cases. So this will be API reference. This will be view video series. And this here will be view app code. Alrighty, so now that we've got all this stuff in here, we want to do once again a switch again for the icon. So we'll switch on self. And we're going to use the uh, SF symbol system icon. So I'm just going to say system icon and I'll copy and paste this to every case here. So we at least have something so it doesn't yell at me. And then we'll want to actually bring in icons. So cool, if you try to build, hopefully everything should be building. We're gonna take this type of this enum that we've created here, and for a given cell view model, this is going to be uh, initialized with the following. We're gonna go ahead and say, this gets created with a type, and this is going to be a settings option. We are going to hang on to this type, so I'll go ahead and say private let will be that type, self.type will be type, and instead of these guys, the image and the title being constants, they're actually going to be computed properties. And all we're going to return is type.displayTitle. And here we will return uh, the type.iconImage. So if you compile, we should be good to go. And let's come back into here. This will get created with a collection of these. Back in our view controller, we can actually set this up already. So let's come into the uh, settings view controller. And what I'll go ahead and do here is we will have a private constant collection, uh, rather private constant view model, I will say. And this will be the settings view view model. This gets created with a collection of view models. And the way that we will create this collection is as follows. We're gonna say RM settings uh, option dot all cases, that's why we did case iterable. We'll go ahead and compact map this, which is basically going to loop over it. And every time we loop over it, we're going to create a RM settings cell view model. And this takes in the type, which will just be $0. That'll create it and return it. And we'll get all of the particular uh, cell view models that we want directly there. So that's looking pretty darn good to me. We'll eventually want to pass this into our Swift UI view, and maybe we'll talk about that in the next video. But before we uh, you know, end this one here, let me jump back to our view model and let's uh, think about what icons we wanna use here. I'll actually open up SF symbols over here. And again, I've got the beta here, so you probably have the newer version. You can use either or. So we're gonna look for a star icon. I do think that exists. We're gonna use star.fill. That will be for the rate app. Now we also have contact us. So I believe message is one of the icon names here. And this little lock kind of just tells you that you're supposed to use this for iMessage. So let's not actually do that. Let's call this maybe compose or send. We'll use send, which is called paper plane. And let me actually use a send one for contact us over here. For terms, what I'm gonna go ahead and use is, I think there's a document icon, so we can say this one here, doc. 
For privacy, I believe there is a lock icon. So we can go ahead and say use the lock, which I think will look great. For the API reference, this one will be kind of interesting. Let's see if reference is one of them. I guess not. Let's go ahead and look for the word list. So we do have a uh, clipboard looking thing here. So I guess we can use that for the reference. For the view series, we want to look for a video perhaps. And it looks like we have a bunch of these video icons and they all have the little uh, icon on them that we're supposed to use them for a particular thing. So let's look for TV here. And it does look like we do have TV. So I will actually use this one. And the reason I'm trying to follow these rules is my hope is to submit this to the App Store and we'll see how much Apple yells at me because they do want their um, you know apps to be of utility and they might say, well, this is just an app being shown, you know, like how to how to write code. So maybe we don't want to approve it. But I digress. For writing code, we're gonna look for a hammer. And this is going to basically symbolize, you know, Xcode, and this is where we'll get our code. And one other thing that I want to add here is I'm going to close uh, SF Symbols. And in our simulator, if we actually go to the home screen, if we open up the settings app, you'll see that all of these icons on the left are inside of kind of this square with nice rounded corners. And this looks super nice. So what I'll actually go ahead and do is try to mimic how this looks. So for to, to, to do that, basically, we need a color for each of these uh, particular um, options in here. So I'm going to open up a, another computed property and we're going to say that this is the icon uh, container color. It'll be a UI color. We'll once again switch on self and I'm just going to return a random color in all of these. So I'll do system blue, system green. This will be system red maybe. Here we'll do system yellow, system orange. We'll return system purple. I think we didn't use that yet. We did not. And then finally, we can return system pink. And because we added this here, we'll want to expose it on the cell view model. So I can go ahead and add this here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of code organization. Let's add a comment here. These are all of our public properties. We'll add that down here. And I will do public var. This will be the icon container color of type UI color, and I'll return the type dot icon container color. So I think we're in pretty good shape with all our review models. What's actually left to do for this screen um, in the next part is actually build this view out and you know shove in all the review models to have it actually show something. Before I do that, and the absolute last thing I'll do here is. Uh, in SwiftUI, we're going to want our icons, our actual uh, view models, I should say, to be identifiable. And the reason we want to do that is because we'll want to loop over a collection of these. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is uh, identifiable here. And you'll see it's going to yell at me. So we'll go ahead and just hit fix here. And what it wants is a uh, object identifier here for our ID and I'm going to see if I can go ahead and just do that should be able to make this a constant and what this basically does is this will create a, a unique ID for each of the view model instances we create I'll also say this is hashable and we actually get that for free I believe with identifiable um, and identifiable, once again, all it does is it gives us a unique ID. So when SwiftUI actually loops over them, when we look at it in the next part, it'll be able to uh, disambiguate between unique view models. So I will pause it there, drop a like before clicking to the next part. We actually did quite a bit, even though we don't see anything here. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you still haven't done so. And, you know, since we're on part 30 and I'll see you in the next video.